Hi there. Welcome to Webology Learn for Good. I am Akash Bishwas and I have started a new course on basic computer hardware. And I will be running this course along with the HTML tutorial that I am doing. So, in this course, we are going to look at uh, the physical components of a computer like uh, a motherboard, a RAM, a CPU, a hard disk, etc. And uh, so, in this uh, we first video, we are going to look at a motherboard and its important components. And if you have any uh, questions or suggestions, do uh, comment and I'll uh, get back to you. And for more information, do have a look at the description below. So let's get started and looking at the main components on a motherboard. And this is an Intel motherboard as you can see name over here. It's an Intel desktop motherboard. And also this is a very old motherboard and Intel has stopped making motherboards altogether now. This is uh, I think 7-8 uh, years old motherboard and uh, yeah as I said Intel doesn't manufacture mo uh, motherboards anymore. And the other com uh, companies that manufacture motherboards are uh, Zipronic, Asus, Lenovo etc etc etc. Okay and uh, so the first component that we are going to look at on the motherboard is a RAM okay so this is a RAM and this is a RAM slot well uh, RAM stands for random access memory and this is basically a device known also as a main uh, memory that allows information to be stored and retrieved on a computer randomly uh, instead uh, in a sequence like a hard disk so this is uh, a device that can store memory information randomly other than a hard disk so this is faster but it is also volatile so after you uh, shut down power down your computer any memory that is on the RAM will be uh, got destroyed okay so let's have a look at the RAM here I have one RAM over here and as you can see here these uh, silicon connectors uh, mainly uh, yellowish uh, golden yellowish are the connectors so these are the main connectors and this is a RAM slot so on this particular motherboard and I think on uh, most other desktop motherboard you'll have uh, two RAM slots so this is a RAM slot and this is a RAM so these are two different uh, components and to install a RAM you make this face downward and with your two thumb and place it in the groove so there's a groove over here and you place it in the groove and with your two thumbs you press them gently on the two sides and you have a click sound okay then you go ahead and press the two uh, clips on the side so that indicates the RAM has been installed and if you don't get the click sound if you don't press on the sides your RAM won't be properly installed and it won't work so when whenever you're installing a RAM make sure that you use the, your two thumbs and press on the sides lightly and then close the RAM with the two uh, clips okay for now I'll just keep the RAM aside and uh, look at the next component as you can see this over here this is known as the LGA socket which is also known as LAN grid array it is for the CPU so the CPU the main uh, part the main component of a computer and the motherboard is installed right over here okay so uh, you have to take this out there's a lid over here and pull the lid take out the clip and put the lid and if you feel this this will be slightly rough and this is uh, brownish uh, you install the CPU over here so while installing the CPU you have to make sure that you face it downward and also a vital tip that I am going to tell you is that while installing a CPU make sure your hands are dry and uh, this it's also not very humid because that can spoil the CPU and after you install the CPU place it uh, downwards make sure to close the lid and put the clip and it's tight okay if this is not done properly you can spoil the CPU the CPU can fall off and then you'll have to spend a lot of uh, money on uh, getting a new CPU so uh, yeah make sure that uh, while installing your CPU your hands are dry and also you do it in a safe and a uh, very a cool place where it's not very hot and humid okay so while you open your 
computer uh, cabinet you won't see the CPU what you'll see is a pan placed on top of the CPU so as you can see there are four holes over here which are used to place the legs of the fan so there is what is known as a CPU fan as you can see if you open your cabinet you'll see a fan over here this is beneath okay so on top of this you'll have a fan and as the CPU generates a lot of heat uh, the fan sucks out the heat and places with cool air okay so on top top of this you'll have a CPU fan and just a tip I want to share is that uh, if for a certain reason your CPU fan is not working or if you don't have a CPU fan never turn your computer you're going to spoil it you're going to spoil the CPU that will spoil um, the motherboard as well so never run your computer without a CPU fan a working CPU fan it really doesn't cost much and you can replace it using it you can it's easily available in the market okay so after the LGA socket comes the VGA port now I'm going to show you the back panel okay if I just uh, flip this right over here you can see this is a back panel this is behind the computer cabinet what you look behind and as you can see there are two sockets to uh, put the mouse and the keyboard and as I've said this is a very old uh, motherboard it uh, still uses pin based uh, mouse and keyboard so the color codes are green for the mouse and violet for the motherboard but as you know uh, in modern times and uh, keyboards and mouse have been USB ports so this really doesn't matter okay and next what we're going to look at if I just uh, show you this way yeah this is the proper way to uh, place the motherboard this this uh, blue uh, connector is the VGA port also known as video graphic array is a uh, three row so there are three rows over here as you can see and it's a 15 uh, pin DE connector so this is basically used to connect the monitors port over here so the monitor this is the output of the computer which you connect to the monitor so the monitors VGA port will come and connect over here okay next we want to look at the USB 2.0 connectors so there are four USB 2.0 connectors on this motherboard and next is the network uh, connector okay so this is the LAN connector and say if you're using a BSNL modem a DSL modem which uses a cable uh, if you have a cable internet connection the DSL modem will come and be installed over here okay the cable and then uh, this is the uh, Intel high definition audio port to uh, put your your headphone your speakers etc the audio jack will come and be installed over here okay so next uh, as you can see this these are two white connectors they are known as a PCI connectors or also known as peripheral component interconnect and so basically this is uh, in this component is used to uh, allow additional devices like modems uh, network interface cards or even sound and video cards to be connected extra so if you want to add extra sound card or video card you add to this okay and next what we're going to look at is this there are four SETA connectors or four SETA ports and SETA is also known as serial ETA which is known as attachment so it is basically known as serial attachment and uh, there are four of these on, on this motherboard and I think most other motherboards will have uh, uh, these uh, four uh, SETA ports and the SETA ports are used to connect your hard disk and your optical drive okay so your hard disk the SETA port connector will come and connect over here and, here, and also your optical uh, drive your DVD player your CD your CD uh, right that entire box will come and connect over here the SETA connector okay and next what we're going to look at is this 2 by 12 uh, main power connector so uh, the motherboard receives the power from the SMPS and the power cord from the SMPS which is a 12 uh, pin connector comes and connects over here okay 
and lastly what we are going to look at is this the small little component over here as you can see I just pull this out this this is known as a CMOS battery which is also known as a complementary metal oxide semiconductor so this uh, little device is basically used to store the BIOS settings of your computer and you can also reset the BIOS setting by removing this small little uh, battery and uh, you can reset the BIOS settings and also uh, this is very useful while troubleshooting your computer if you, if you get some problem you can remove this and use the you can reset the um, BIOS settings and also this component over here this is used to store the time of your computer so after you shut down power down your computer the time is lost but thanks to this CMOS battery it stores the time of your computer okay so let's just leave aside and have a look at our last uh, component over here this this black little component as you can see this is known as the internal speaker okay so every motherboard uh, I think should be having an internal speaker so uh, while you boot your motherboard you get a beep beep sound either one beep or two beeps which uh, indicate that the CPU is working fine the hard disk is working fine or the RAM is working fine so this is the component that uh, speaker which indicates uh, which gives a beep uh, uh, that sound the internal this is known as internal speaker well uh, that's it for this uh, video tutorial hopefully you have uh, enjoyed uh, watching this video and this is the very first video on basic computer hardware and I'll be uploading more videos on basic computer hardware looking at other things as well like I've said earlier a hard disk or uh, a mouse a keyboard etc and as usual uh, do like comment share and subscribe and uh, keep watching uh, webology learn for good and do come back for the other videos thank you